welcome back to the channel guys and what I'm going to be doing today is a kit review on this bit of kit here which is the Crossfire CF2 rucksack. First thing we're going to cover then is specifications. So materials used then, this is 500D Cordura uh, which is great, um, it's absolutely sturdy as you like, I've not had any issues with anything rubbing through and I've used this quite a bit. So I think 500D Cordura is a good option for this because it keeps the weight down to a degree but yet it still gives you a decent amount of protection for your gear. It's actually rip stop as well so if you do get a little tear in there it's going to stop the rip stop points. Uh, dimensions of the pack then so it is this is kind of without packing it out because it can go a lot bigger okay but the actual pack from kind of that point to this point here is 57 centimeters okay any Americans watching this try and use your fingers and thumbs to work out centimeters all right okay width wise then then it's 37 centimeters across that's not including side pouches and then front to rear, it's around about 23 centimetres. And I say around about approximately because I've measured that with a tape measure. And because you've got gear in it, you know, it can expand out, it can compress in a little bit. But they're the rough dimensions to the pack. Okay, weight wise, I don't have a uh, scales that measure to the exact uh, ounce or whatever, but it's around about five pounds in weight. So they're the dimensions and sizes and stuff of the pack. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is carrying capacity. Now, this is um, 37 litres in size, all right? Um, now, to me, this looks a bit bigger than 37 litres, but that's what it's quoted as on the Crossfire website. Now, 37 litres is more in the sort of day sack category. I class this definitely as a Bergen or rucksack, depending on, you know, what country you come from, etc. Now, day sacks normally go in the region of 30 to 35 litres. Um, for example, what I've got here is the JJ's Light Fighter Pack. Just ignore the side pouches for the moment because they're an add-on anyway. But if you look at the size difference there, this apparently is 35 litres. And yeah, it can be packed out a little bit more. This is 37 litres and this can be packed out a lot more, okay? So just one to kind of bear in mind um, thinking of sort of capacity size and stuff like that, um, I would not use this as a day sack. So don't be fooled by that 37 litre size thing. It's definitely a larger version of 37 litres, however that works out. And you could definitely use this for overnight stops. I've done that several times. And you could, you could use this for, you know, up to two to three days, if not slightly longer, depending on how much kit you're going to carry, especially when you start adding on the side pockets and maybe front pockets and stuff like that as well. So that's just a little word there about the capacity of the pack. It's, it's got quite a large capacity. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all the functions and features of the pack. I'll go from top to bottom, inside and out, um, talk about the carriage and all that sort of stuff. So on the front side of the pack then, as you can see at the top, you've got their Alpine style lid there. And on that, you've got the Velcro panel there, which I've got my patch on there, the usual, just a Velcro panel. But underneath that, what you've got is this reflective piece that comes out, which is good for IFF, plus, you know, for civilian use, that'd be quite good for if you was out hiking um, in an urban area, you know, if you was going down roads and stuff in low light at night time, then that's gonna give you a bit of added safety. And that just tucks up there and just stays out of the way nicely like that. The logo is actually a new logo that's changed from the older versions, so it's a bit more low profile. I'll talk about the lid pockets in a minute when I flip it over. So as you can see, running down the center of the pack here then, you've got a zip, and you've got a zip at the bottom, and there's also, if I just pop these two buckles, there's a zip at the top as well, so you can access the front of the pack, pop the compression straps, and open it and get to your gear like that, from the top or from the bottom. So if I do that compression strap there then, I just, what I normally do with mine is I just tuck it into one of these loops, just keep it out of the way, open it up. And you know, if you had a dry bag in here with say water kit in there or your waterproofs or whatever, then you can, you can grab it there. So also running down the front of the pack, you can see this like ladder webbing system. 
So you've got that one there, you've got one going along here, you've got another one there, and then you've got another one just over here. Same's mirrored on the other side. So that is uh, Crossfire's LTAS system, which is the ladder toggle attachment system. And basically that's how you attach the pouches. So you can attach more on the front here and here. And then you've obviously got the ones on the side here. They're not included with this pack, um, but they're quite a good addition. So to use this LTAS system then, all you're gonna do is take this webbing loop. You're gonna pass it through the strap there. And then what you're gonna do is use that to pull out the toggle like so. And that's how it works, so quite easy. To actually attach a pouch in the first place, we're gonna total opposite. We're gonna take this piece of cord and we're gonna pass it on the outside of that webbing loop. Pass it through like so. Use that to start getting the, the toggle through. Then we're just gonna pull it through and then pass it behind the webbing strap here. And you can see then that that's nice and solid. The tension's holding that in place and that's not going anywhere. And it's actually more simple to use than your standard Molly too. We've obviously got the main straps that attach up to secure the, the lid. And the straps have got these nice Velcro strap tidies on, which are on most of the straps to be fair. And then also there's a piece of web in there that you can pass the main strap through just to stop it from flopping down, which is something I really like. And you can hear there that those buckles are nice and sturdy and they click in a place really nice. Another good feature about these is you can actually field replace the buckles. And if you have a look there, you've got a piece of webbing that you can pass through this buckle here and just take that whole buckle off and then replace it. And Crossfire do actually provide you with a, space, a replacement spares pack, which is awesome. Um, I've already mentioned the compression strap. There's one there and there's one just under the lid there because this is actually compressed quite down at the minute. Strap tidies on those, which is a mag, you know, that's awesome um, for keeping your pack nice and tidy. That's something they've added since the DG3 days. That was some of the feedback I gave them about it. So it's great that they're listening to that. And it's nice that these straps there help keep your pack nice and tidy. Um, there's these little buckles, four of these buckles on the bottom here. Um, these could be used for adding straps, but they've also got the option of putting this loop in for an ice axe or walking poles. And then going on to the very bottom of the rucksack itself then, what you've got there, you can see that there's these webbing loops. So underneath those, you've got drainage grommets. So you've got one, two, three there, and a fourth one there. And at the bottom, you've got a grab handle. So that's great for, you know, hauling your kit out the back of a vehicle and stuff. It can be quite handy, that. So the waist strap then, you can see, this has got lots of nice padding in it really really nice waist strap and on the waist strap you've got three loops of molly by two high these are really handy for chucking on um, pouches such as water bottle pouches utility pouches for sticking in your, you know your snap bars your gloves your hats and stuff like that really really handy these are and these were an addition from the dg3 and um, I don't know if it's my result, but basically that was one of the things I debriefed back on, saying it would have been handy to have the PALS loops on there, so that's really good. Um, you've also got the standard DG3 option of pulling the waist strap in, which is much better. It works a lot better, um, just it's more ergonomic um, to tighten up your waist strap um, from the outside in rather than the normal way, which is that way out. Um, and again, strap tidiers on the end of the straps. And then you've got a cobra buckle, a plastic cobra buckle, which works really, really well. Now these wings actually detach. So these parts of the waist strap, these wings actually detach here. All this can come off. And you've got three little buckles. You've got one, two, three. And you basically, again, just pass the webbing through those loops and that whole piece can come off the same on the other side. So if you're wearing belt kit, if you're operating, you know, military use, um, you won't want that waist strap, so you can take it off. And there's actually a strap that attaches here, and that attaches into their DZ rig, which is awesome. And it, it actually mean, it means the DZ rig becomes the waist belt for this rucksack, which is awesome. So you've got the same on the other side, exactly the same, all the same functions. Obviously, you've got the, the female side of the Cobra buckle on that side. Right, then, so we're going to talk about the lid now. So... 
the lid, it's got three main compartments here. The first one zips open like this, and inside here, you've got some organization panels. So you've got two thinner ones there that will fit something like a, a glow stick, and then you've got a fairly larger side one there. I can pretty much fit my hand inside that. Um, you could use that for a notebook um, or just, you know, something a little bit bigger. They actually fold flat as well. So they don't take up any space if you're not using them and you could you could fit a fair bit into that top bit. You've also got these webbing loops here. So to close them, you could grab that as a bit of purchase and put it across. Okay, so if you've got a bit of kit that's like a bit st stuff in the pouch out, these are going to make closing the pouches a bit easier. You've got the main one here then. I'm just going to take that out. This is the spares pack. I'll talk about that in a bit. The main one there. And this is a fairly decent size. You can see there's this mesh bit here. Now that is the pocket that's on the underside of the lid, but you can actually access it from this side as well. So there's another compartment there. And then inside it here, you've got another pocket on the upper side and that's all soft lined, okay? So there's soft material there. And that's great for obviously things like sunglasses or any kind of optics or things like MVGs. If they're not in a case, that'll prevent them from getting scratched against anything else in this top lid. Okay, the lid is actually attached via these little metal loops here. Um, and you can attach them in two points there and there's a secondary point there. So if you was to attach them there, it's going to bring the lid down a little bit flatter. The lid's actually completely detachable. So if I was to undo those two buckles there and there, you can take the whole lid off easily and quickly. Obviously you've got the two on the other side and you can replace it with a, another type of lid. Now Crossfire sells the jungle lid as well, which is a bit more of a low profile version of this. And they also make a day sack lid. So I haven't used one of those yet, but um, they look pretty good. And you can basically, it converts from a lid to a day sack by just detaching it and then it's got shoulder straps and you can just throw it over your back. There's a stiffening piece here as well. So that helps give the uh, lid a bit of form as well. So it stops it from flopping, it makes it stand up a little bit when you've got more kit inside the main part of the rucksack. If you're not using it as configuration, if you're attaching it here, this basically just folds underneath like so, so it doesn't get in the way. Um, you've got a nice grab handle here. This is really good nice and flat it doesn't bother you it doesn't flop against your neck or anything like that that's some of the other rucksacks i've used and it's a nice big wide size so it's easy to grab which is really good um this zip compartment here is really good this thing here so what we've got is a zip on this side a zip on this side and you can just open it up a little bit you can run your hydration bladder tube through there or if you had a radio inside here you could run the antennas and stuff or cables through here on both sides. It's a nice, big, decent, chunky zip. Now, one interesting thing about this then, if you were using this for military use, um, you could open this up, and if you had a radio mounted inside here, you could get to the controls, change frequencies, whatever you need to do with the radio, without having to undo the top flap and go into the main part of the Bergen. So that, that's really nice. Also, you could use that just for getting into something in the top of your rucksack, you know, because that's underneath the actual, that's inside the main compartment there. So that could be quite handy just for civilian use as well, as it goes. Looking on the inside of the lid then, so this is that, that pouch, the mesh pouch that's on the inside. You can access that there. So if you want to kind of keep stuff that you want to keep more secure, and that's there um, you've also got these little toggles here as well so if you have a look at the edge of this this has got bungee cord running through it you can tighten them up like this and that, that tightens up the actual sides of the lid like so so we're going to talk about the carriage system which is absolutely awesome if you have a look at these shoulder straps there so you've got the load lifters on the top um, I've taped away the straps I'll talk about those in a minute but if we have a look at these nicely S-shaped straps, shoulder straps, and have a look at the padding on these. These are absolutely awesome. I'm not sure what this material is here, but it's very comfortable against your body. Um, and it's got like a yoke-shaped system here, and it's just fantastic. A really comfortable carry system. You know, I carried this on my 150 mile in July walk, my challenge, 
come in at least 30 pound plus water and these were the carriage system's just great on this um you've got a mesh panel here to help disperse some of the sweat and then on the back side of this here you've got two buckles one at the top one at the bottom the same on the other side underneath there and then basically you can adjust this up or down using these according to your body shape and your size your height um these don't affect your back at all um like i say i've carried a bit of weight in this for a long distance for a lot of time and you don't feel them against your back at all so really nice so what you've got on the shoulder straps there then same on both sides is you've got these loops coming down um obviously you can use them for attaching bits and pieces you can also use those for attaching things like elastics which is what i've done there so what I've done is I've put that through there so you can put like a drinking bladder tube through there and I've got another one on here as well. These straps here, now these were quite long and they were fed through all these straps and they come down to about kind of there and they had like a loop on the end. So I think the idea is you can stick your thumb through the loop and put a bit of tension on there, relax your hands and also maybe just put a bit of tension on. It's not the sort of thing I do to be honest and for a military Bergen and I found a bit of a strange decision. So just one of the I wouldn't say it's a minus but you, it's easy to fix up you can you know tape up the strap flight so unusually weirdly these didn't have the strap tidies on where they're on just about every other strap so the, that says to me that that's how they were intended to be used like just threaded through there okay the sternum strap then so you've got a nice sternum strap there it's attached there and you've got the other side of it over there nice and solid again strap tidier on there it doesn't have the elastic bit in the middle that helps you kind of breathing and stuff but with you know with military it's not so important because this is mainly designed as a military pack because you're going to be wearing body armor and stuff anyway so you're not going to have that flexibility however really good sternum strap and you can adjust it all the way up this bit here so there's a velcro piece there you undo the velcro and then you slide the strap up and down where you want it and you can see there's a bit of the um, opposite side of Velcro there. So that holds it in place and it does not budge. Same on that side. So that's really good. I've got that in a perfect position me, uh, for me, right at the bottom. Um, so you can just adjust it and put it where you need and it'll just stay there. Um, on the bottom of the shoulder straps then, you've got this bug out buckle system here, which is awesome. It's basically a quick release system. All you do is grab hold of that, pull it down and it releases the whole shoulder strap. works great but it's nice and secure that won't undo unnecessarily you know inadvertently like some of the other systems might do i've seen it on the uh, plc air support bergen where they just come off and they're crap but these are really good then you've got the normal kind of buckle there which i much prefer rather than the side release buckle which you don't need because obviously this is on there um this is much easier to adjust by just pulling up you've got a toggle there and you can pull up on or just pull down on the strap to adjust nice and quickly. Um, you've got strap tidiers again on the end of those straps to keep things nice and neat and tidy. Um, I have a little bit of space on there, so you've got the option to have it loose when you throw it over your shoulder and you just do it up, um, so that's nice. Then you've got the lumber pads at the bottom here. So these lumber pads, you can take them off. You actually undo a Velcro piece in the middle here then you twist it, it's on like um, a pivot point, twist it, take it off, and then you can place these in three positions up or down according to your body size and type and whether you're using belt kit or not. So these ones I've got set at the lowest point, reason being is when I was doing that 150 mile uh, walk, um, I wanted to have the waist belt low over my hips, whereas if you're carrying belt kit, you might want to have them up a little bit more. Looking at the actual frame then, you can see it's got a frame attached there. And if you notice on the label, it will say CF3, because that's the CF3 frame. It's the same frame used on the CF3 rucksack. So this is a, a polymer frame, and it's really decent. It doesn't creak or make noise like I've had of experience with other polymer um, frames, but it's nice and sturdy. It'll allow you to carry massive amounts of weight and um, it actually flexes ever so slightly with your body. Um, it's not like a rigid metal frame that can feel a bit uncomfortable. So yeah, great bit of kit. And that's the carriage system on the back of the rucksack. Absolutely excellent. 
going into the main compartment of the rucksack then there's a there's some good little features inside here too it's not just an open bucket all right so you've got a removable hydration bladder sleeve here and this is massive i mean it's i don't know what the dimensions are of it but it's it's quite a big bit of kit look. um so you can get at least a three liter bladder in that and um, that can be removed as well. You've got the toggle system, same as what's on the outside. So you can take that completely out if you want to. Um, as part of the bladder pocket, so it's not attached to the rucksack, but as part of the bladder pocket, you've got the attachment there for the, the strap, sorry, for attaching your uh, hydration bladder. Um, if you have a look inside here, then you've also got, there's a mesh, long sort of mesh pouch there with a Velcro um, lid on it. There we go, so you can put longish items in there. You could use that for stuffing in, you know, wet or dirty clothes, whatever. If you wanted to organize your rucksack a bit better, you've got the option there. And they're removable. Again, you've got the same LTAS system there, so you can take that off. And the same on this side here as well. So you've got that same type of um, system. And it's attached at the bottom as well. You can just about see there, I think, you've got the LTAS system at the bottom there to stabilize it. So it's not just flapping around inside your rucksack. So that's really good. So you've got the organizational capacity inside your rucksack as well as outside. And these can actually be moved position from there. As you can see, there's more loops there. There's more down the bottom there as well. So you could have either more of these in there or you could change the position of them depending on you know how you want to pack your kit. So you can actually customize even the inside of your rucksack. That's really good. One of the things they include with the rucksack then is this little pack of spares so you can actually do some field repairs on your rucksack should you have any issues so these buckles as i mentioned are removable you know you don't have to start cutting straps or thread or anything like that you can actually take them off in the field which is awesome so within this pack then what you've got is some bungee cord so you can use that to tie in and around the LTAS system uh, and use that as a you know, field method of just using you know stuff in your kit away things like waterproof jackets and things like that you've got the spare buckles themselves so inside there there's two of the male two of the female uh, you've actually got some material there so you can literally do field repairs if you get you know for example it it gets hit by shrapnel or something or that it gets burnt or just gets caught in barbed wire you can actually take a patch of this and sub it on do a field repair like that um, then there's these strap tidiers. So these are the actual strap tidiers that's on all these buckles. So you can pull them out and then replace them. And there's, there's what, one, two, three, four, five. You have five of those in that pack, which is awesome. There's some more material there. for doing field repairs. Um, so what's really cool as well is you actually get a replacement bug out buckle. So the whole system for one side you can replace if it was damaged. Now that's pretty cool. Um, and then you've got one of these load lifter type straps there. And then you've got the other buckles here. Let's say two each of a complete buckle, some materials, the old load lifter strap, the bug out buckle, and bungee. It's, it's not a bad little extra to have with your rucksack, to be fair. You know, you couldn't do that with a PLC rucksack or an Alice pack. Okay, what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to summarise my thoughts on this pack right here. First thing I'm going to do is talk about how I see it being best used, and then what I'll do is I'll talk about what I see as the pros and the cons of the pack. So then, this is great for rucking or tabbing, as we call it in the UK. So basically just getting out in the field or on the roads, whatever, um, going at you know, a decent pace with weight on your back. I used this for my 150 miles in July challenge. I was carrying 30 pound plus water on my back and you know, I got to know the pack intimately during that time. Um, but I had no issues with it whatsoever. I had no sort of strain points on my neck. I didn't get any kind of Bergen burns on my um, lower back or anything like that. And it was just really comfortable to be fair you know carrying weight's carrying weight but if you can do it comfortably it's always a bonus so it's great for carrying weight over distance 
uh, to that and then it great for just hill, hill walking out in the out in the wilderness you know um, if you're just doing a day hike or if you're out for two or three days this is a great bit of kit for that sort of thing you can definitely carry plenty of gear in this um, as long as you don't overpack with a massive sleeping bag or if you're in really really cold conditions you know normal temperate conditions this is great for anything up to three days or possibly even more depending you know on how much kit you actually carry next thing military use so this would be great for military use um, you know depending on how much gear you've got to carry and what your role is you may want to go up maybe to the cf3 i don't know um, but either this or the cf3 would be awesome for military use and you can get a fair amount of kit in this you can see the size of it you can also add to the capacity by adding pouches to the front here as well as to the sides so you know you can actually build up the capacity quite a bit and the fact that it's so sturdy and so well designed it would be absolutely great for military use pros and cons then so first thing we're going to cover is the pros now as i've mentioned probably a few times in this video now super comfortable to wear um, the comfort from the shoulder straps and from the the lumbar pad and, and the waist straps here is just really good it places a good amount of weight on your hips uh, and the shoulder straps just kind of hug you so the comfort of this pack is just amazing so that's definitely one for the pros secondly is all the different functions and features over the pack there's loads of stuff in there i've talked about it throughout the video the fact that you can extend the lid you can remove the lid you can get into the main pack through this this opening here from the bottom or the top um, the waist strap um, is removable and it's it tensions up from the outside in you've got you know the, the quick release buckles on the shoulder straps all those things um, just amazing you know the, the amount of features and functions packed into this is something else so it's really good third thing there is the quality you can just tell as you look into the pack and when you've been using it for a little while the quality of this is just second to none uh, it really is all the stitching all the zips all the all the straps all the buckles everything is absolutely quality on this pack cons then so what i'm going to do is talk talk about a couple of things that i personally would change or things that i i don't like about the pack okay the first one then it doesn't actually have any side pockets here you know like what you get on a lot of packs where you'd have like a piece of material coming out here and you could just slip a water bottle in so if you didn't have this side pouch on you could slip a water bottle in um i would i would rather see that on there if if i was given the option okay so that's just one thing from my point of view okay second one then is these straps here and it's not a drama whatsoever because i've taped them up haven't i you know so it's not a problem but the fact is if i undone this now the loop or the strap would sit right down here which is a bit overkill for you know top tensioning strap normally they're kind of like this long um you basically just got to roll them up and tape them off so the third one then is the weight of the pack it's not a light pack okay for a 37 litre pack apparently ish 37 ish um it's relatively heavy it's around about five pound um which isn't super heavy but the fact is it's not a lightweight pack okay so it's not like having one of the sort of lightweight osprey packs that you can get that you know probably weigh about you know a pound and a half or something for their really lightweight packs um but you know that's the price you pay for all the different features packed into this all over the place the fact that it's super sturdy and you know it's got that frame on it you know the fact that it's got this frame on it that's going to add a fair bit of weight in itself and all the straps that need to attach it but that gives you the option or the capability to actually carry some really heavy loads but there's you know there's going to be a trade-off for that so that's my three cons for the pack okay then so that's my review on this bit of kit the cf2 crossfire rucksack what do you guys think has anyone else got this pack what's your thoughts what's your views on this or any other crossfire gear just one thing before we go then, I've actually got a discount code that you can use in conjunction with buying this kit direct from Crossfire itself. If you put prepared pathfinder in, into the actual bit where you buy the rucksack, you'll get 10% off. That's a little bonus there then. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and you'll be seeing you again soon. And as always, stay prepared.